It's time for a mailbag episode. I'm going to answer some of your questions that you've had for me about anything sports related or not. If I didn't answer your question, I'm sorry, but I hope you can still enjoy the video. Let's begin. Zach Reinkon, I hope I'm saying that right, asked, Hey Barry, I'm curious what your thoughts are on Giannis. He's my favorite player in any sport ever, and going off a resume and accolade standpoint, he's already the second greatest power forward ever behind Tim Duncan. Well, that's still debatable, I think, but Giannis is obviously a great player and is on track to finish as a top 15 to 20 player ever. I still think he has some limitations in a half court setting that prevent him from ever reaching the top floor though. I also have my doubts about him winning more than one ring. Tristan Matheny asks, have you thought about branching out of sports and into other realms of entertainment like you did with your Halloween video? Well, I'd love to eventually branch out to talk about movies and stuff like that, but right now my lane is mostly just NFL and NBA since those are the two sports leagues I know the most about and the majority of my followers are also fans of them. Samuel Royko, again, I hope I'm saying that right, asked, what was your most heartbreaking defeat as an Eagles fan? Well, I am well versed in playoff disappointments outside of 2017 as an Eagles fan, but it has to be Super Bowl 39 versus the Patriots because it was an extremely winnable game and the team had several dumb turnovers in New England territory and they didn't take enough advantage of the Patriots going scoreless for almost the entire first half. Brady's luck in full effect. Zed Eunice asked, not really a question, but you create great content and your comedy has helped me through some tough times. Keep impacting people positively, no offense to Magic Johnson, while being you. 100 emoji. Well, I really do appreciate that, and as I've said many times, I hope that my content makes all of your days better, even if it's in some dumb, insignificant way. The world can be a really terrible place, and we can all use a distraction from time to time, and I enjoy being that distraction. DB asks, your thoughts on the whole defense is dead sentiment that seems to float around sports, mostly football and basketball, as that's what I watch mostly. Well, for the NFL, I agree. In today's league, the offense has way more advantages, and especially the quarterbacks have way more advantages than ever before. That's true, but for the NBA, I completely disagree, and it's just blind nostalgia when people say defense used to be better. The amount of shot making and talent in the league today is leaps and bounds better than 25 to 30 years ago, so it makes defenses look worse. Trajan Weber, again, I hope I'm saying these names correctly. I apologize if I'm not. Thoughts on The Thing. It was made by John Carpenter, who made Halloween. It's my favorite horror movie and, in my opinion, is the greatest horror movie ever. You're the true goat, by the way. Oh, well, thank you for the compliment again. I try my best. As for The Thing, it's a great film, and I think the practical effects still look great all these years later. The blood test scene is probably the best scene in the entire film. I give it bonus points also for not having any premarital sex scene. Ram the Man. Genuine question. Please answer genuinely. Okay. If you were to rank the quarterbacks from the 2004 draft class, how would you order them, and do you think any of them are Hall of Famers. Well, I assume you're talking about the big three from the 2004 class, Big Ben, Eli Manning, and Philip Rivers. Big Ben is a lock to make the Hall of Fame. I don't agree with Eli making the Hall of Fame, but he's going to get in because of his rings and his last name. And I think eventually Rivers will get in because of his stats, although I think it will take the longest for Rivers. In terms of ranking them, Ben was the best, Rivers was second best, and Eli was third best. Light Voltaire. From a current perspective, what is your opinion on Trevor Lawrence? Do you believe he'll ever be a great quarterback or was his rookie season just that bad that it might hinder his entire career? Well, to be honest, I've always thought Lawrence was a bit overrated even at Clemson and after his rookie season, I do have serious doubts as to whether or not he'll ever become a great quarterback. I understand that his situation was awful, but I mean, he was hyped up as a generational prospect who can overcome a lackluster supporting cast and he was mostly really bad. But I'm rooting for him to succeed because the NFL is better with more great quarterbacks in it, except for Tom Brady. Rocket Showcase. How do you feel knowing that you have single-handedly caused premarital sex rates to plummet down to 0% through your inspirational speeches covering the topic? Well, I obviously take a lot of pride in preventing young people from committing the unforgivable sin of premarital sex. Unfortunately, though, your stats are not correct, as there are still many people out there right now doing the premarital sex. It makes me sick, but there's still lots of work to do. Jamin V. If the Celtics lose a series against the Heat, and again, I am recording this after Game 7, so they did not. They would have lost in the Conference Finals four out of the last six years. Besides 2017, since he wasn't there, do you think this would affect Jason Tatum's legacy? Well, if Boston had lost in the Conference Finals tonight, I do think that, that it obviously might not affect his legacy in real time right now because he's still such a young player. I mean, he's only five years old, so there still would be plenty of time for him to make up for it, but if he were to end his career with something like zero rings or to only make one Finals appearance, I mean, they're never guaranteed 
they're going to get back to the finals after this year. We, I do think people will eventually look back at it and think of it as major missed opportunities, especially 2018. Pouncing Panther Pucks. Talk about alliteration, folks. How come you never talk about baseball and hockey on your channel? And also, if you play video games, what is your favorite console of all time? Well, I never talk about baseball or hockey because I don't really know as much about those sports as I do with football and basketball. I'm a casual baseball fan and I don't watch any hockey except for some playoff games. As for video games, I grew up in the PS2 era, so that has to be the choice. Name Redacted asks, what types of music do you listen to? Any specific albums or artists you would point to as your favorite? Well, most of the music on my phone is either rock or rap. I don't have a specific album or artist in particular, but I do enjoy Alter Bridge, Breaking Benjamin, Disturb, you know, the usual. As for rap, pretty much mainstream shit like T.I., Eminem, I got some Jay-Z, Kanye, and Drake. You get the idea. I'm a normie. The Supreme League asks, in previous videos, you stated that Derrick Rose didn't carry the Bulls in 2011 and shouldn't have won MVP. You also think Iverson was overrated. Rose and Iverson are both thought of as players who aren't very efficient but have all the intangibles. Do you think that intangibles are a myth? Intangibles are vastly overrated, especially in pro sports. These are grown men getting paid millions of dollars. They don't become good because a teammate says some generic ass statements to them. I mean, obviously, you don't want to be a guy that teammates hate or don't respect, but talent will always be most important when it comes to winning championships. BTA asked, what is your favorite bedtime story your wife's boyfriend has ever read to you? Well, personally, I love the three little pigs. Wait a minute, that is not funny. My wife is extremely loyal to me and would never cheat except one time at an office Christmas party in 1999, but that's not important right now. Moving on. Easy game. Top five LeBron games or three or one, whatever is easiest. When was the moment you thought this guy maybe is playing at a level no one has reached. In terms of importance, nothing will ever top his game six against Boston in 2012. In terms of the actual best game he's ever played, considering the circumstances, I would say game six of the 2016 finals. 41 points, eight boards, 11 assists, three blocks and steals, 59% shooting, just one turnover. He was flawless on both ends and helped stave off a late Golden State rally. I also want to give a shout out to the 48 special that he had in Detroit in 2007. As for when I thought this guy's maybe playing at a level no one has reached, I am partial to 2018 postseason LeBron. I think I think LeBron in general is the best basketball player ever in terms of how complete he is, but the most skilled offensive version of him was in the 2018 playoffs, and it still kills me to this day that it wasn't he wasn't rewarded with a ring, all because Kevin Durant is an insecure beta male. Well Rested asked, what are your thoughts on the ongoing Steph is on the same tier as LeBron narrative? I find it to be very, very annoying. Steph, to me, is top seven or eight all all time, but LeBron is top two. LeBron has more longevity. He has a better peak. He's more consistent in the playoffs. He can carry bad teams better. He outplayed Steph all four times they met in the finals. He's superior in every way except shooting and moving without the ball. Steph has never beaten LeBron on an even playing field. And the one time they played on an even playing field, Steph shit all over himself and went crying to Kevin Durant in the Hamptons to come save him. Steph fans need to get a grip. Burke Niles, what, in your opinion, is the worst missed slash incorrect call in sports history, both in terms of stupidity of the call and impact of it. Well, I think it easily is the tuck rule. I know people will say, oh, but it was a rule. Yeah, well, and it was still a terrible call. The ball was not moving forward. So it was clearly a fumble and it should have been ruled a fumble. Obviously, it helped to launch the evil empire. And who knows how the Brady Belichick era would have gone if they didn't get that first ring. I think they obviously still would have been successful, but the early mystique they had of being undefeated in the playoffs would have been gone. So we never know. William Rapp, what did you imagine you would do for a living as a kid? Well, when I was a kid, I wanted to grow up to be an NFL player. It was really the only thing I was ever passionate about, even all the way up through high school. But I eventually came to the realization that I was a short and slow white guy, and my chances of even becoming a Division I athlete, let alone an NFL player, were basically impossible. Isn't that inspirational? Cam Talk Sports, what was your reaction to the infamous J.R. Smith blunder in Game 1 of the 2018 Finals? Uh, I started shitting and pissing myself in a fit of rage. It was honestly like watching somebody walk up to the Mona Lisa and wiping a big slimy booger all over it. Don't forget about George Hill either missing the free throw and the most overlooked thing was the refs wrongly overturning a charge on Kevin Durant in the final minute. Just a complete clusterfuck. Raptor Jesus 101. Outside of sports, what are some of your hobbies or interests? Well, outside of sports, my biggest interests are definitely not watching porn and jerking off. I would never do anything as disgusting as that. In fact, I literally don't know the name of any porn stars. 
Cobb Salad asked, How conflicted would you be if LeBron joined the Warriors? How would you feel if Steph came to the Lakers? I would absolutely not be happy if LeBron joined the Warriors. There's just way too much bad blood between the two sides to ever want that. However, I would absolutely welcome Steph Curry on the Lakers because Steph and LeBron would literally form the most unstoppable offensive duo the world has ever seen. But obviously, that's not going to ever happen either. Bradley Thor, best NBA team of all time. For example, the 96 Bulls, the 01 Lakers, or the 2017 Warriors? The answer is easily the 2017 Warriors. They literally took a 73 win team and replaced Harrison Barnes with Kevin Durant at the peak of his powers. They almost swept the entire postseason with ease outside of a few games. It was both awe inspiring and completely embarrassing at the same time. Fuck them. The Golden Age, 8 11. What is a quick ranking of your top defenses in the Super Bowl era? Just off of the top of my head, the four best are the 85 Bears, the 2000 Ravens. 2013 Seahawks and 2015 Broncos. I think the 2015 Broncos will be the last truly great defense we ever see carry a team to a Super Bowl with an objectively terrible offense because the league is too offensively friendly right now. Justice Hughes, do you ever think your channel would be as big as it is? I knew that if I put more effort into making content that my channel would grow since I feel like I have a decent combination of knowledge and humor about certain subjects. So I'm not shocked it's gotten to be as big as it is, that's what she said. I've never put a ceiling on how big my channel can get, but it can still get so much bigger, that's what she said again. I am absolutely eternally grateful for all your support. James Burgess, what's the one unchangeable sports opinion you'll never be moved on, no matter how much the popular opinion shifts on it? I will always believe fullheartedly that Kevin Durant joining Golden State in 2016 is the worst decision ever made by an athlete. I, there's people who are trying to move past it and say, oh, get over it, it was a while ago, but guess what? I will never let it go since his decision had permanent negative effects on his legacy, Steph's legacy, and LeBron's legacy. He altered league history for the worse, and we're still seeing those effects play out right now with morons trying to put Steph over LeBron because of rank. I hate it here. Inside the Cynical, do you have any favorite current YouTubers or YouTubers in general that help inspire you to make this channel that you still follow to this day? Well, I'm a huge fan of guys like Five Points Vids, That's Good Sports, and Urinating Tree. They helped me realize that I could have a career talking about sports on the internet. They're also really super cool and awesome dudes, and I wish them all unlimited amounts of success. They're also very sexy. Shout out to Tom Grossi as well. Golden Steel TV. Why do you hate the dink and dunk offense so much? In your videos that I watch, you take shots at that system every time you provide us footage of quarterbacks throwing short passes, especially when you mention quarterbacks that like to play that way. Uh, I hate dinking and dunking because it's boring as fuck. It's pretty simple. It's similar to hack -a shack in the NBA. Was it effective? Yeah. Was it entertaining? Fuck no. Stop being pussies and air the fuck out of that ball, baby. Rex Grossman had the right idea. Nate McCoy, do you think Russell Westbrook is overhated or are people making reasonable comments about his play? I do not think Russell Westbrook is overhated in terms of his play. He is probably the worst player in the league right now who consistently gets minutes. He provides nothing good to a team on either offense or defense. He fucking stinks, but sending him and his family death threats is obviously not acceptable and way too far. Mike Smith. Say you walked into a tractor supply and see a John Deere tractor and a Bobcat tractor side by side, which one are you more likely to purchase? Well, I don't know shit about tractors, but whichever one turns my wife on more. Kenny Chesney had the right idea when he talked about how his tractor makes women horny. Wade S. Dumbest thing you've ever seen on a sports field, football, basketball, professional or not, whatever. Well, I've seen a lot of dumb shit, but I always think back to Kirk Cousins taking a knee on the Eagles goal line at the end of the first half when his team had no timeouts. So instead of kicking a field goal, they scored zero points. It happened late in the 2015 season. Deshaun Dawson, your top favorite movies of all time. The Godfather has to be there. The Godfather was very good, but I would not say it's one of my top favorites. I would probably say my favorite movie ever is the original Halloween, and I also love Team America, World Police, Austin Powers, the Deuce Bigelow movies. All that dumb, stupid comedy makes me laugh. Cameron Spitz, what are your thoughts on LGBTQ plus rights? I don't care one bit if you're gay, straight, trans, or anything else. If you treat me with respect, I'll treat you with respect. If you're a douchebag, well then you can go fuck yourself. I don't play favorites, that's the code I live by, and I think the world would be better if more people did the same. Man dude, one, two, three, go. What is your MLB hot slash controversial take? Also, why not do baseball bits? I don't really have many controversial baseball takes other than I think the sport was better and more entertaining. Everybody was juiced to the gills, although I'm not sure that's an unpopular opinion. Fuck having integrity. Entertain me. Microwave Capri Sun. Do you 
ever experienced burnout from making YouTube videos? I wouldn't say burnout since one of the perks of making YouTube videos is that you can make videos on topics you enjoy. I will say that when you start to get successful, you feel a little bit of internal pressure to keep making content so you can keep up the momentum. That's why I usually have a new vid every four or five days or so. Finding Pair Gaming. What are your thoughts on death metal music? Well, it depends on what you mean by death metal. If you're talking about the super duper heavy shit where every singer sounds like Cookie Monster and you can't understand anything, I'm not a fan. However, I do enjoy certain songs from bands like Kill Switch Engage, As I Lay Dying, Bullet for My Valentine, and Slipknot, among others. Abdullah Zafar. Very personal question, so I understand if you don't want to answer it. So what is the whole wife joke thing that's been going on? Well, the wife joke started from an old Twitter account that was just an avi of a middle-aged white guy who constantly tweeted about how lonely he was and how much he missed his wife. And I thought it was hilarious, so I adopted it since it's funny and really harmless. Memes, memes. Have you ever cried to any sports games? I don't think I've ever actually cried after any sporting event, but I do remember after the Falcons blew a 28-3 lead to Brady in the Super Bowl, I felt dead inside and wanted to inject 700 marijuanas into my ass for about a week. Real time. What's your opinion on steroids in sports? Should they be banned or allowed? And should steroid guys from other sports, mostly baseball, be blackballed from honors such as the Hall of Fame? Well, as I already said earlier, I preferred when baseball was in the steroid era since it was way more exciting to watch. When it comes to the Hall of Fame, I think it needs to be handled on a case-by-case -case basis and not with a broad stroke. I honestly really don't care about steroid usage in football either since it's such a brutal sport. The fact is, is that players will always look for advantages. Quays BN, what sports moment made you the horniest? Oh, wow. Uh, either when Brandon Graham strip sacked Tom Brady late in Super Bowl 52 to essentially seal the win or when the Cavs completed their 3-1 comeback on the Warriors in 2016. I literally had a rock hard erection for weeks afterward in both instances. Stig LaPointe. Now, I know it's just for the jokes, but are you or are you not a Star Wars fan? I am a Star Wars fan. I grew up obsessed with the movies and I still enjoy shows like The Mandalorian, Boba Fett, and the new Obi-Wan Kenobi. I also love reading some of the comics, but despite this, my knowledge of the Star Wars universe is absolutely minuscule compared to the real diehard fans. It's honestly amazing how much content is out there. It's literally endless. Daniel Mashinik, again, I hope I'm saying that right. What is your favorite sports movie? More specifically, what is your favorite football movie? The Waterboy is probably my favorite sports movie overall. Um, I want to also give a shout out to Happy Gilmore, Talladega Nights, The Comebacks, Slapshot, Dodgeball, The Sandlot, and Caddyshack. Relent Les, 41. Who is the most controversial player in history and present time? You pick the sport. If you're talking about players who haven't been in trouble off the court but are still hated by a lot of people, I think it's LeBron. Overall though, I think the answer is OJ Simpson because his murder trial will be talked about forever and the fact that he got away with it will always fascinate people. Satan, oh hello. Why do you say eat Arby's after each Tom Brady reference? Forgive me if I'm out of the loop, but I don't understand what it means exactly. Well, this has been the one joke that I've made on my YouTube channel that a lot of people still don't seem to get, but I'm going to spoil it for all of you now. It started from a Twitter account called Nihilist Arby's that liked to tweet really depressing things about how life is pointless because we're all going to die alone no matter what we do, and they always end their tweets with something like eat Arby's. So me saying eat Arby's is just my way of saying that life is pointless and nothing matters. I hope that made you feel better. SPDP Raw Cereal. How many men has your wife slept with? Also, do you think LeBron is ever winning a ring again? Let's not talk about my wife, okay? The wounds are still very raw. As for LeBron, I don't think he's going to win another ring, at least certainly not with the Lakers. But again, he's still an elite player somehow. So if he were to go back to Cleveland to finish out his career, who knows? H12, best moment as a Twitter troll. Well, obviously nothing will ever top getting Skip Bayless to say man boobs on national television. I still have no idea how it happened, but I'm very, very glad that it did. Therm64, do you play any video games? What music do you like? I have not played video games in years, but when I was growing up, I absolutely loved them. I played Call of Duty all the time. I used to love killing my own teammates in hardcore team deathmatch, and I would always enjoy listening to them have tantrums on their microphones. I guess I've always been a troll. And as for music, like I said before, mostly rock and rap. Anything but country music, basically. Maurice Lamdell, greatest horror movie ever. Uh, Halloween 1978. Michael Myers' mask is still awesome, and I like the fact that the premise of the movie is actually realistic and could happen to anybody. That is scary.
scary, not shitty possession movies like The Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity. Curio Music, what's the optimal PP size? Well, it's a very interesting question, thank you. I would say, while flaccid, it's probably around six to seven inches. When erect, I would assume somewhere between nine or 10 inches. Uh, I'm not a penis expert, but I would think anything bigger than that would cause a lot of dizziness and lightheadedness from too much blood rushing to your hawk.